applied radiology trainee um, based in Cardiff, South Wales. Um, and I've been asked to give a talk about radiology training. Um, but just a little bit about myself, because a lot of you don't know who I am. Uh, so I was born in Baghdad in 1987 and came to the UK in 1990. So born in Baghdad but bred in Cardiff. Um, I did all my training in Cardiff, so I graduated from Cardiff Medical School in 2011. I then did my foundation training in Cardiff um, for my F1 and then F2 I was in North Wales. And then I went to Liverpool for core surgical training before I did radiology. So I did one year of core surgical training um, and then went straight back to South Wales for radiology. Um, so I'm also the immediate past president of the Society of Radiologists in Training, so I'm going to talk to you about the SRT as well. So what I'm going to cover in my presentation today is why choose a career in radiology, how to apply for specialty training, and what the radiology training in the UK is like. So why radiology? I mean, in medical school you don't really get taught radiology, you don't have a lot of exposure to radiology because they're so focused on you know, GP, surgery, medicine, um, and medical students unfortunately don't get the, the experience and exposure that they should be getting. Um, and this is a problem across all the medical, stu uh, medical schools in the UK. Um, but radiology is, has come such a long way in the past two decades because of the advancing technology. Um, we're able to do a lot more than we were able to do 20 years ago with all the, uh, the equipment that we have now, the 3D reconstructions, interventional radiology. Um, so it's not just about diagnosing patients, but it's about managing patients as well and improving their quality of life. So, um, you know, interventional radiology is now becoming incredibly popular, it's being described as surgery without a scalpel, um, and we get a lot of senior trainees in surgery switching to radiology um, because they want to do interventional radiology and have the lifestyle as well. So, it's, you know, it's a nice work-life balance in radiology. Um, and breast radiology, which is what I do, I, I'm a women's imaging specialist, I do breast and gynae. Um, breast radiology encompasses all aspects of the patient care. So we work, these, these are my colleagues, um, Mr. Summit Goyle, the breast surgeon, and my colleague, Dr. Young, consultant breast radiologist. And we work very much as part of a team. We run clinics alongside the breast surgeons. Um, we examine the patients, we take biopsies, we um, do wire localizations for our breast surgical colleagues. Um, and we, we do a lot of intervention. So it's, it's not just you know, sitting in a dark room all day uh, reporting scans, it's more than that. It's, uh, you know, having that patient's contact, um, looking after the patient, and doing the interventional side of things as well, which makes a difference to um, patient outcomes. So that's why radiology in a nutshell. Um, and so I move on now to the application process. So the um, Clinical radiology application is a national recruitment process through the Oriel system. And these are just the statistics from last year's um, application process. So 967 applications um, were put in for clinical radiology for 278 posts um, in the UK. Um, of those 967, 555 uh, applicants were interviewed. Um, and the way that, that it's whittled down to that number is by the introduction of the SRA, which is uh, an exam uh, that's used now for all most um, specialties to sort of, it's like a general medicine um, test. Uh, and you have to have a certain score um, to be able to get shortlisted for interview. Um, and it's now 3.48 applications for every one post in radiology. Um, those numbers have increased because there's a massive shortage of uh, consultant radiologists in this country. Um, and the Royal College of Radiologists have tried to um, convince the government to, to increase funding and numbers of, of training posts available in the UK. So it's, it's increasing every year. When I applied, there were 190 posts available, and that was uh, five years ago. So. Uh, there's many websites now, Radiology Cafe, Radiology Nation, um, the British Institute of Radiology, the Royal College obviously, and the Society of Radiologists in Training have a lot of information about how to apply, the, the, time, uh, the timeline for the application process, and what you need to include in your portfolios, what you must have 
to uh, have a strong application and do well in the interviews. So I recommend for anyone who wants to uh, apply for radiology to have a look at these uh, websites and for, for more information. So the radiology training itself is five years and it's a run through program, which means once you enter the um, radiology, your ST1, and when you finish ST5, you get your CCT, which is the certificate of completion of training, uh, and then you'll be able to apply for a consultant job. It's optional whether you want to do a fellowship, it's not something that you need. Um, so that's, you know, if you want to do interventional radiology, then it will be an extra year, so it's six years. Uh, to become an interventional radiologist. So the first three years of training from ST1 to ST3 is called core training. So you cover everything in, in radiology. So you learn how to do ultrasound, uh, neuroradiology, the first two that you start off with to, to be able to get up onto the junior on call rotor. Um, musculoskeletal, pediatric, women's imaging, nuclear medicine, head and neck, oncology, chest and cardiac, interventional and GI and GU. We have to be competent in all these core um, uh, uh, subspecialties in order to be a good all-round radiologist. And then in the second phase, the ST4, ST5 is the subspecialty training, uh, where you then choose what subspecialty you want to do. You can choose one or you can choose two. Um, doing two subspecialties is very difficult because you've only got two years to get really good at your, at your trade. Um, unless you do a fellowship. So I'm doing my neck and general radiology, but there's so many jobs available in, across the country that you, know, you don't have any problem. You don't have to choose something that's not as competitive because you will all get a job. Um, there is a massive shortage, unfortunately, um, for, for various reasons, but it, it's nice that once at the end of your training, SD5, you can then, uh, six months before you CCT, you apply for a consultant job and you can take your pick of where you want to go and you can negotiate an amazing job plan. So that's one of the, the advantages of, of doing radiology. Now, radiology is notorious for the difficult exams. I mean, every fellowship exam is difficult, uh, whatever Royal College you're part of, but uh, radiology exams are particularly difficult. And you've got, in the first year, the first FRCR, which is the anatomy uh, and physics exam. The anatomy exam is okay. Uh, the physics not so okay. Uh, that's quite a difficult exam. And then, um, so that's at the, in your first year. And then in your ST3 year, you have to do the, what's called the FRCR 2A exam, which is basically six modules. Um, but the Royal College have changed the format of the exam. They're continually changing um, the ways of examining candidates um, over the years based on, on feedback and based on what needs um, need to be met for the future. So the SD3 exam, the, the 2A now, is um, two papers which are three hours long. So instead of doing six module exams, which is what I did in the old system, they've now made it one big exam, six hours, um, two papers, three hours each, one sitting, um, and that's in December. If you fail the exam, the next sitting will be in June. And you have to pass that exam in order to go um, forward for the 2B exam, which is the final um, exam. So we do our fellowship exams throughout our training, um, whereas surgeons will do an exit exam at the end, isn't it? Yeah. So um, you, you have the five years where it's very exam heavy um, in those years. The, the 2B exam has got three components to it. So you have a viva, which is um, two half an hour stations, 15 minutes. So you get examined by four consultants, radiologists. They'll have 15 minutes each with you. And then the next part of the exam is uh, a rapids exam, it's called, which is you have 30 x-rays in 30 minutes to do the x-rays, as in half of them may be normal um, and half are abnormal. If they're abnormal, you have to state what the abnormality is, but you've only got half an hour to do it. And that's why it's called rapids. And then the other component is the long case exam where you have six cases. They could be CT, MR, uh, nuclear medicine, brain film, um, you know, any, any modality. And you have 10 minutes per case to report the, the, the case that you've got. Um, so yeah, once you finish your 2B exam, so mainly a lot of ST4 um, trainees will have their FRCR. Um, the sitting is in October and May, um, sorry, in April. Uh, so two sittings of the exam. 
um, and most trainees should complete the FRCR at ST4. Um, there are some trainees who obviously um, will have some difficulties with this exam, and they'll still be doing it at ST5, and that may um, uh, sort of affect their subspecialty training because it's very difficult to continue with subspecialty training if you don't have the FRCR. Um, so there's there's lots of ways around, you know, there's, there's lots of support for trainees in difficulty, um, and there's lots of support from the Royal College, uh, you know, for getting these trainees through the, the exam as well. And then once you've got the 2B exam, and you've got um, that extra year then of, of subspecialty training, then you get the CCT. And then, uh, you know, the FRCR admission ceremony is one of the highlights, um, where, you know, you go to some really nice venue in London. It was in Westminster Hall um, for me last year, and uh, it's, you know, it's a fantastic uh, occasion, so that's something to look forward to. Um, based on uh, the video that was played yesterday, these, are th these next three slides <coughs> excuse me, I added um, last night because of what I heard in that video. Um, it's something called the Medical Training Initiative, um, which is um, uh, an initiative designed to enable a small number of international medical graduates to enter the UK and undertake a period of specialist training for up to two years before returning to their home country. Now, um, the Royal College of Radiologists, a role in this particular session, is to sponsor in respect of the GMC registration and to confirm that the tier five visa may be requested by the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges. And actually, um, all these Royal Colleges participate in the um, medical uh, training initiative. So pretty much all the Royal Colleges, the Royal College of Anesthetists, the physicians, um, Royal College of Physicians in London and Glasgow, the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh and England, uh, Emergency Medicine, the Faculty of Dental Surgery, Royal College of Pathologists. Um, so this is a really good uh, initiative that uh, not many people are aware of actually. And uh, ARAV is on the list uh, for these con uh, countries that uh, can participate in the NTI. Um, so if you want uh, more information about the Medical Training Initiative for Radiology, you can go on the Royal College website and it has an overview of the eligibility criteria um, and information about the application process. But it's designed to be a mutually beneficial scheme where you know they get um, doctors in training from you know mainly Africa, Asia uh, to come to the UK, train them up two years and then they go back to their country and take back the skills that they've learned in the UK to, to better their um, departments back home. So um, the other thing that I mentioned uh, during my presentation is fellowships. It's not um, it's optional, um, but I've decided that <coughs> it's a good idea to do a fellowship. So I secured uh, one of the first um, fellowships in the National Breast Imaging Academy. This is a new um, initiative to address the uh, shortfall of uh, breast radiologists in this country. So this is an initiative from uh, Health Education England and the Royal College. Um, so I uh, will be going to Nottingham in February for a 12-month fellowship um, for applying for a consultant job. And fellowships, um, you can do them, uh, there's, most of them are UK-based, but you can go to Canada and Australia. Um, it would be difficult to do a fellowship in America because you need the American exam, you need the USMLE, um, which not many British trainees will have. Um, so. Uh, yeah, Canada, is, uh, you have to apply two years in advance to do fellowships abroad. Um, but uh, I was advised to stay in the UK because uh, if you go abroad, they obviously practice differently and there's not much information that you can then bring back to the UK if you do abroad fellowships, is, is the thought process for radiology. Um, so the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, the SRT conference, the Society of Radiologists and Training Conference. Uh, there's so many conferences that take place in radiology, and this one particularly is useful for uh, junior doctors who are thinking of applying to radiology and for radiology trainees from all stages, ST1 to ST5. And uh, when, when I was um, the president of the society, we, um, they still do, to be fair, get the best speakers in the country, taken from the Royal College Annual Scientific Meeting Program and the traveling professors of the Royal College of Radiologists. And we run workshops as well where delegates get the chance to you know, do a bit of intervention, do some ultrasound, and uh, get a flavor of what radiology training is like. 
And there's also an opportunity to um, submit your posters. And we get a lot of support from all the British subspecialty societies. So we get a hundred pound sponsorship from each of the British subspecialty societies and consultants from each society then judges the poster prize um, and not the SRT committee. So it's you know it's an amazing society to be part of. Um, and you know it's it's something that will help potential applicants into radiology as well. There's, the website also has some fantastic resources uh, for junior doctors wishing to apply. Um, the other thing is um, the RSNA and ECR uh, conferences, so the Radiological Society of North America. Um, this uh, meeting takes place in Chicago every year, November, December time, and it's the biggest radiology conference in the world. We get, um, they get over 60,000 delegates attending this. Uh, and I attended this conference in 2017, um, where artificial intelligence was such a big uh, theme in this conference, as it is now dominating all radiology conferences, artificial intelligence. Um, so, uh, and as radiologists, we see artificial intelligence as an aid to our work rather than a threat. Um, and it's something that will definitely um, make our practice very different in the next five years or so. Um, so these, these sort of conferences, the European Congress of Radiology, um, they always um, speak about the big topics, they you know, talk about all their research, and, and the Europeans and the Americans are, are very, I would say, more advanced than we are here. Um, so it's always good to go to these sort of conferences. Um, the ESR, European Society of Radiology, uh, conference happens in Vienna every March. So I attended that last year, and then I went to Athens for the European Society of Breast Imaging uh, conference to see what the Europeans are um, doing, what research they're um, doing in breast imaging. So I think it's definitely worth um, considering a career in radiology. Um, it's not us just sitting in a dark room all day reporting scans or office work, as some people describe it. Um, it's more than that. You know, we're at the forefront of technological advancements. There's so much more in, in our armory that we can do now with this um, advancing technology. Um, and I, I definitely recommend it. It's, it's a good lifestyle as well. You know, if you've had enough of the three-hour war drowns and that sort of thing, radiology is, is the, the best career choice. Um, and we get a lot of uh, senior trainees in other subspecialty, in other specialties coming into radiology. So you can apply for radiology from F2, but um, a lot of the trainees um, across the UK actually, certainly in my training scheme, they've come from different backgrounds. They've, you know, they've come from senior surgical uh, registrar backgrounds, um, trauma and orthopedics, breast surgery, um, and they've come into radiology and unsurprisingly they've chosen you know, the, the TNO registrars have chosen MSK imaging, the breast surgeons have chosen breast radiology. Um, so we, we do get a lot of senior um, people from other specialties coming in. Um, and I think it is an advantage to do medicine or surgery before, um, you know, coming into radiology. So for the F2s that come into radiology, you know, they end up being consultants at the age of 29, 30. Uh, I think, you know, that might be a little bit of an issue. Um, and you just need a bit more experience in medicine and surgery to be a good radiologist. And I think that for me, definitely doing core surgical training, surgery definitely is more advantageous, more beneficial um, for a trainee coming into radiology. So I do recommend uh, radiology as a career. Um, and just to um, sort of tie in with yesterday's theme, um, radiology is beautiful. I mean, I do breast radiology and one of my colleagues described looking at mammograms like staring into a starry sky um, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to find uh, a really subtle cancer um, in the breast and, you know, for, for, your, for the untrained eye, it's very difficult to spot the cancer in a mammogram, you know, which is, it has sense for us. It's like looking at a starry sky. So to me, radiology is beautiful. I, I wholeheartedly recommend um, that you consider a career in radiology. And uh, if you do, email me, um, and I'm more than happy to help. Now we take some questions. You said well done on the talk. Uh, you sold radiology very well. We all regret now not being radiologists. Yeah. Uh, I have a question on the um, for the, for the post fellowship. Uh, yeah. fellowship. 
Yeah. Do you think part of that fellowship should be the, the intervention radiologists spent on the clinical side, i.e., for example, they go on the surgical side? Because sometimes in the middle of the night, for example, as a urologist, we have that conflict with yeah. obstructive kidney. Yes. Yeah, and we, we, are, we can't sleep. We say this patient might die, needs to yeah. have a nephrostomy now. But the radiologist say, I can't do it now. I have to wait till morning. I have that rest. You know, the full setup and all the support. Yeah. What's your views on that? Uh, my view, so in my hospital, they, they now, and this is only recent, they have an interventional radiology on call. There's not many hospitals, particularly the CTHs, they don't have this um, availability. Um, whereas in, um, I'm talking about the University Hospital of Wales, they now have this setup. But this is only a new thing, and it's very recent, um, where they do provide this service, um, but it's a consultant to consultant referral. Um, and nothing to do with the registrars on call uh, anymore. So if any, um, if there is an obstructive infected kidney that needs an urgent nephrostomy, there is that facility to do that. Um, but there's not many uh, radiologists and DGHs. There may be one consultant radiologist at least that will be able to do it. And if they are not on call, then it's uh, sort of uh, up to them to come in in their own, you know, not non-contract, <coughs> long call to come in and do it. Um, so in my hospital, before the interventional radiology rota was established, um, the registrar would call an interventional radiologist, um, no matter what time of day it was, say 2 a.m., for example, and they would come in to do it. But that's an agreement with um, your, your local radiologist, as opposed to anything to do with the training itself. So the inter to become an interventional radiologist, you need to do an extra year of training, so it becomes six years. Um, and that extra year you can do as a fellowship. Um, one of my colleagues has went to Birmingham to do, it's a pre-CCT fellow though, the, the fellowships in, in interventional radiology. Um, and then you get your CCT once you've done that extra year of the fellowship. Um, and then you're then able to apply for a consultant job in interventional radiology, of which there are many in this country once you go CCT. Now, not focused on 
these sort of things focused on the cost section, which is the way that radiology is going now, because every, you know, all the surgeons now, instead of, um, you know, saying, oh, this patient's got right cardiac cost of pain, but it's probably appendicitis, take them to the theatre, they always request a CT scan. Um, most surgeons now request CTs before touching the patient and taking them to the uh, theatre. So we do a lot of CT scanning um, in my hospital. And, and obviously the, the ability of the, the radiology training is reflected in the workload that we do. Yeah, because you can avoid the radiation and cause, and you jump to CT before doing the plantain, yeah. and you are good in the plantain interpretation, yeah. because a lot of normal hilum reported as there is a mass CT, there is small nodules, or yeah. it is a nipple CT, and this is the radiation cause, and I don't think it's right. That's true, but there's also the argument that, you know, our colleagues in, in medicine or surgeon will say, well, we're going to request a CT anyway. So what I said to one of the SHOs, um, you know, this patient's presented with abdominal pain, you haven't even, and you're querying perforation, you haven't even done a chest x-ray, an abdominal x-ray. Oh, well, we're going to do a CT anyway, is the response. And then we end up doing the CT. Um, but I, I personally, when I'm on call, I'm, I'm a bit tough, and I would always get... Uh, the basics done first before uh, going on to cross-section um, but that's, and that's the way I practice but I think my colleagues are less um, they sort of give in to the pressure of other surgical and medical colleagues and they just go straight to, to CT which is incorrect. But don't think. you think that this actually reducing the radiation? I mean if they have a, a strong suspicion of perforation then you do x-ray yeah. and then you get a good CT scan yeah. so the x-ray now is the yeah. access radiation so it's a it's a clinical it, it is a clinical um, uh, radiological decision it has to be yeah i mean I, I go a lot by um you know the the clinical the, the biochemistry of the patient you know if they've got a really raised crp raised white cell count i always ask for this information um as well as the creatinine obviously um and if the if the bloods are normal then i would definitely get the x-rays done first um but then it will be up to the the smaller age trial, the consultant as to what they want then, and then you know some some of the consultants they, they will uh, they think they can order a scan from us and not request it. Yes. Uh, so yeah. they tell they think <laughs> they, they can tell us what to do. Yeah, yeah they treat it as a technician, That's which, wrong. which is wrong. <laughs> um, so I, I'm very particular on what I will accept on a non-call, and and I will have that discussion with the the consultant. I have no problem in calling the consultant on call and having that discussion because that's what radiology is all about, is doing what's best for the patient and, and doing the right test to establish the diagnosis. And, and there's, there's many things that we can do to do that. I just want to purpose our time, we've got about 25 minutes behind. I'm going to take two very quick questions from Dr. Posey and Dr. Yeah. Sam. Uh, it is an excellent uh, presentation, and I think you can talk until the night. Yeah. <laughs> And this two surgeons in a theater is similar to frequent MDT, which we do in cardiology and in GI. Nowadays, the trend of MDT is so different. Previously, I think every month or every whatever, we do the MDT. Now, even a very trivial case, very simple, we do an MDT. Because of the legal, uh, the legality is so uh, annoying nowadays, especially in UK. Then, if you do an MDT for a case, then everybody is aware and everybody is signed for that. So the message to our colleague in Iraq, it would be great to implement this frequent MDT meeting to discuss cases with multidisciplinary. We do it a lot with the radiologists in our uh, So it's just a comment that's uh, so just one last question. Uh, first of all I'm glad that you put the press as uh, you know the European oh, for beauty because that's yeah. what I agree with you for all aspects. But, uh, uh, regarding the uh, intervention radiology, you know, what is the percentage that uh, radiologists they want to go to intervention radiology only? That's one. And second thing, whether in the future that 
artificial intelligence will replace the radiologist normal and leave the intervention radiologist to the radiologist and intervention radiologist. Because mm -hmm. maybe this is the future, like, see, you give, you know, computer training for all aspects and, and you report immediately, rather than waiting for radiologists. Yeah. Maybe this is the future? Um, so, artificial intelligence, um, as I alluded to in my presentation, uh, we don't see it as a threat, so we're not going to be replaced by artificial intelligence, uh, you know, churning out reports that are better than ours. Um, it, certainly, um, artificial intelligence is, is um, being very well researched in breast to be the second leader um, in the screening mammograms. Um, and for us, that frees us up to then do clinics and do focus more on the complex cases, the multifocal cancers, rather than the, you know, the fatty breast that doesn't have cancer in it. Um, so that's what artificial intelligence is being researched um, in, in breast radiology. Um, as for interventional radiology, uh, it's a very popular subspecialty amongst trainees. Um, and quite a few, you always get quite a few radiology registrars choosing interventional radiology, so they don't have problems in, in recruitment. Um, to, for training to do IR. Um, where we have a problem is breast radiology um, because they, they don't think that it's stimulating enough wrongly. You know, they don't have a good experience in the women's imaging block um, and because the um, breast, um, the Royal College is moving towards training breast clinicians and consultant radiographers to do a similar job, um, they don't think it, that a radiologist um, should do that job because other people can do it. Um, so that's where the problem is in, in breast. But IR doesn't have a problem. I can't tell you the percentage of training because I don't, I don't have that information. But it's, it's very, very popular, the IR. Okay. Okay. Now we'll move on to the